Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial and in this video I'm going to walk you through how to set up Geopix 2.0 uh, from the GitHub and install it to your computer. So this is a fairly straightforward process and if you're familiar with GitHub I don't think you'll have any issues. This is just a tutorial for those of you who may not have as much experience with GitHub or just new to uh, Geopix in general. Uh, but essentially, uh, you know, the project lives on GitHub and you will need to go to github.com slash environmental slash Geopix. Uh, and that will take you to the home page here, which is basically going to have a README and a bunch of links up here. We'll discuss these in future videos and a few other things on the right here as well. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to be walking through three different uh, methods that you can install Geopix from. The first and the most uh, straightforward is to go to the releases section right here. And if you click on that, it's going to take you to the releases page and this is where you're going to find the most stable production ready builds of Geopix. Uh, you don't have to go hunting for the right uh, version in GitHub. You can just go here and find, okay, version 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Uh, So in the future, there'll be more releases here. And all you have to really do is download the zip file here for the Geopix uh, executable project. And that's going to give you everything you need. However, uh, if you're looking to be more on the bleeding edge and you want constant updates, you, know, you can get the latest and greatest version of Geopix uh, by clicking on the code button here and just download the zip file. Uh, the zip file is going to be very similar to what you get from the release, but this is going to be the most recent a, uh, project from the branch that you're on. So if you use that uh, download option, make sure that you have the branch set to main because anything other than main, I promise you will be very, very broken and in a deep state of uh, partial development. So main is kind of where things that will be uh, pretty much ready to use but not tested will be. Uh, and, and so that's where you want to download your code from if you're going to use this button here. Uh, but in this actual video, I want to walk you through the process of using the GitHub desktop client uh, because that's what I personally recommend for those of you who want to stay up to date. Uh, if you're not familiar with the GitHub desktop client, it's basically a tool with a GUI that allows you to clone repositories easily and not have to worry about any code. Uh, so if you don't have this and you want to go this route, uh, you can download this from the web by going to um, GitHub desktop client. Just search for that and I think the first link will take you to this page and just click on download for Windows and you can get that installed. Uh, the big advantage of uh, the desktop client, and the reason why I'm suggesting it, is uh, that once you've got Geopix set up and once you've run all of the uh, initial startup scripts that happen automatically on first run, you can pretty much just update Geopix uh, to the latest version by clicking this fetch origin and just pull latest from the web. Uh, this is seamless. It's designed to work with the scripts and all of the uh, automation that I have set up in the repository. So again, highly recommended. But if you want the latest and uh, most stable release, what you'll want to do is uh, get the latest release from here. All right, so once you have the GitHub repository or GitHub desktop open to add a repository, you just click on the Add button uh, and Clone Repository. Uh, it might look a little bit different for you if you haven't added any repositories yet, but just basically go over here to the URL tab and grab the URL from GitHub, which will be this uh, link right here. And if you're not sure if you're at the right link, just click on the code button and make sure you're on main. So grab that link, paste it in here, and just choose a path uh, on your computer's uh, folder structure to kind of store this in. I'm just putting it on my... Um, platter drive here. So once you've done that, just click clone and it's going to basically uh, clone this entire repository onto that folder. Uh, and then from that point onwards, you'll have something on the left over here called Geopix and you can just click uh, fetch to update that anytime you want. Okay, so once you've cloned that repository, what you're going to have uh, is a directory that looks something like this. You've got a, a GP folder, and you've got a couple of batch files, and then you've got a couple of things here that are GitHub related. You may or may not see these, but you can mostly ignore them. Uh, the readmes are basically what you see here on the GitHub. Uh, so for example, this is readme.md, and you are looking at the same file here. You can open it in Notepad if you want, but this is just how GitHub works. It's going to give you all these files as well. 
All right, so the way you run GeoPix, it's really simple. I've put a lot of work into making sure these automated batch scripts kind of do all the heavy lifting for you. You really just have to run start geopix.bat. And I recommend always uh, starting it in the future with this as well. Uh, so basically just double click on that. And what that's gonna do is it's going to launch a command line prompt and you can read kind of the process here. Uh, what it does is it searches your computer for a previously installed version of the touch signer uh, executable uh, different versions of geopix are going to require different versions of touch uh, as you can see this one's 2020.28110 uh, and if it doesn't find this on your computer and it searches a registry to determine whether or not it's there it's going to download touch as it's doing here and install it locally to the .td folder, which is going to be local to your repository here that you downloaded. Uh, this video I'm recording with the assumption uh, that there is no installs already in your system. So what you're going to have next, and you can't see this on the video, but you have the Windows user account control asking if you'd like to install Touch Designer. So if you're watching this video and you have a slower internet connection, be sure to stick around for the end of this download because that's going to eventually prompt you to install this. If you miss that, it's going to eventually cancel on its own and the installation will fail. So be sure to stick around for that. Once you get to this window and you see this progress bar going, you can walk away, make a cup of coffee, do what you gotta do and come back and it will be finished at some point uh, down the road. Uh, so this is the touch designer installation. It takes a bit. It's a, a fairly hefty install. As you can see here, the installer alone is 846 megs and it uncompresses to two or three times that. Uh, the way I set this up uh, in the batch files, I actually have this installing to uh, this local folder here inside the repository, uh, repository dot, uh, that's called .td. And uh, this was just done to make this as portable as possible and to keep files from being too uh, scattered around the system. If you already have Touch Designer installed on your computer, uh, it's going to be obviously installed in program files. So if you've installed this specific version it requires and it finds it in program files, you're good to go. It's going to skip this entire step. Uh, if you have a different version of Touch Designer, two or three uh, different versions, if you are a Touch Designer developer, it's going to install this uh, as a parallel build. It's not going to actually overwrite your installation and that's going to basically set that up as a portable installation uh, so you don't have to worry too much about this uh, messing with any of your previous installs okay so this is almost done and once it's done it's going to start the next step which is the library fetching of the assets the default uh, sample assets so these are not required things uh, the required assets do come with the uh, github repository uh, but these are nice to have and it does help set up the project directory a little bit more <clears throat> so you can actually see uh, kind of what goes into that and how it looks so if you go over here into library uh, you'll notice that we have kind of a, a large section of folders we have this 3d folder right here <clears throat> we have audio fixture which has to do with custom fixtures uh, we have the HDR <coughs> folder PBR folder for PBR materials um, we have our projects folder which is where you're going to save and load all of your geopix projects from <coughs> and you also have your videos folder here which is where you source uh, video loops and stuff like that now you don't have to store things in this directory structure if you don't want uh, for the most part you can put things wherever you want on the uh, on your own computer and you can just kind of pull things into geopix uh, but the reason I put this together here is uh, you know to encourage people to use a relative file structure because when you uh, load files in from from this directory that's you know underneath the executable all of your files and your assets are going to be loaded in with uh, relative paths which is going to help you if you ever move this folder uh, so if you zip it up and you give it to somebody else on a thumb drive uh, in theory, they should open this up and be able to run it exactly like you had without any modifications. Uh, so it's highly recommended to work from relative file structure, and that's all uh, part of the setup here. Uh, but you don't have to. It's just helpful. So once that's done, you'll notice that the command line does a few last things, and it wraps up and shuts down. And now we have the Geopix executable starting up here in touch, and that's going to load uh, here in just a minute. 
hit uh, 100%. And since this is the first time we're running GeoPix, you're gonna notice a bunch of command line windows that pop up here and install some things. And worry not, these are just Python libraries being pip installed. One of the other things that happens uh, when GeoPix get set up the first time is we have uh, Python extracted and installed to this directory and then a separate bootstrap uh, script inside of GeoPix actually installs a bunch of Python libraries which takes up a lot more space so it couldn't be included in the GitHub but this is just part of that initial startup process. Again, this is a one-time thing, although if GeoPix gets updated in the future and there's a new uh, library that's used, this will automatically uh, install those when that version gets run. So again, you don't have to think about any of this stuff, or at least you shouldn't. And if you run into issues, definitely uh, you'll have to send me in some logs and make an issue or two on GitHub and I can take a look at that. But this is designed to just basically be a one-click setup and run. Um, and everything goes well, you'll be eventually presented with the GeoPix window. As you can see here, we've got the about screen, uh, the splash screen, whatever you want to call it. And then of course, if you close that, you've got the application window beneath that. And you know, everything's good to go at this point. You can create things, you can start dropping down objects and you can move them around and do what you got to do. We'll have more tutorials on all of this later. Uh, but in this basic tutorial here, we've pretty much gone from uh, GitHub to fully installed application in about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, one, one quick thing I'll go ahead and show you here about the actual file structure and the executable. Um, what this geopix, startgeopix.bat does is it essentially runs a couple extra steps, you know, and it launches GeoPix with, you know, the locally installed touch designer, if it exists, or the matching touch designer that's installed in your system. Uh, GeoPix is always going to be dependent on a very specific version of touch. You might get lucky and you might be able to run it with a newer or older version, uh, but you're very likely going to run into issues that are version dependent. So it's quite important to run GeoPix in the version it was designed for. Uh, you should get a notification in GeoPix if you end up running it with something that it was not compiled for. Uh, but uh, the bat file here kind of helps ensure that you're always running it in the right version. If, however, you want to just launch GeoPix straight up and kind of run things in the Wild West, so to speak, you can always make a shortcut to the GeoPix underscore 2.0.to. Uh, and when you launch that, it's going to basically just launch the, the file just the same. It's just not going to run any of the batch files and it's not going to run the library fetch script. So up to you. Welcome to do that if you want. Just know that there are a couple ways to go through that, but this is the safe route here. Uh, one last thing, if you are new to Touch Designer and you've never used it, when GeoPix starts, you're going to be presented with a license sign-in screen. So uh, to kind of get past this, you need to go to derivative.ca and sign up for an account and once you make that free account, you'll get five free non-commercial licenses attached to your account. And all you need to do is when GeoPix starts up in Touch Designer, just sign in with your username and password from derivative.ca. Pick one of your non-commercial licenses, activate it to your computer, and you'll be good on that computer forever. Okay, uh, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. And if you run into any issues whatsoever, uh, just send in your logs and attach them to an issue over here in the GeoPix GitHub, and I will take a look. Um, the logs, if you're curious, will be in your GeoPix root of your repository. You'll have your library downloader log, your start log, and your TD install log. Uh, so if you have any issues, just send all three of these. Or if you know specifically what part failed, just send the one in question and we'll take a look at it and get it sorted out. Thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next one.